Hello mountain bikers! Welcome back to your favorite gear show. February is a short month, but that doesn't mean that the bike industry has been any less busy than usual. On the contrary, we've got a bunch of cool stuff to talk you through today with new pedals, a work stand and some fancy new lights on the menu. But before we get into the reviews, time for our customary industry news roundup with a month in a minute. Let's dig in. Transition has updated the Smuggler. With 130mm of travel in the rear and 140mm up front, they say it might just be their most versatile bike ever. Reeb Cycles is on a roll, they've just released the all-new steel-framed Steezel and the ultra-exclusive Deep Purple SST, of which only four units will be made. At US dollars this one will leave an impression on your friends and on your wallet. The Integration Masters at Bold have launched their 2023 Unplugged, a 170mm Enduro Beast with a hidden rear shock. Raw has dropped the Yalla, the brand's first DH bike, providing plenty of adjustability in a robust package built to take on a season of racing. If you're looking for something that is not a DH bike at all, Ibis has brought back the Carbon DV9 hardtail, developed to provide XC performance at an affordable price point. Alchemy has added 5mm of travel to its Arctos 120 and 135 bikes, bringing them to 125 and 140mm of travel, respectively. Troy Lee Designs just launched the all-new Flowline helmet, achieving a 5-star Virginia Tech rating with a very competitive price tag. In other helmet news, Bell just introduced the Full 10, packing all the latest and greatest safety features into a shell that provides more comfort and better goggle compatibility. Hope has just released the Pro 5, the latest iteration of its legendary line of hubs, with faster engagement and several key durability improvements. Shimano has just introduced the second generation of its S-Fire and Aerolite models, featuring Ridescape lens technology. Fox Racing has entered the MTB shoe market, and now the Union shoe line is officially available in shops. We have an article up on our site if you want to read about our first impressions. The other Fox just added two longer travel variants of its Superlight Transfer SL Post if you're looking for a little more drop for your Superlight build. And to conclude, Granite Design just launched their new Quiver Tool Roll, designed to help you carry tools and spares under your saddle with a convenient ratchet dial to keep it all snug. Whoa, so much cool stuff! And we're not done yet. Time to get into the reviews. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and you could certainly do a lot worse than take inspiration from Deity's awesome T-Mac pedal. BC-based Tenet launched their occult pedal in 2020, and although it has a visual identity of its own, it's clear to see the similarities with the T-Mac, especially from the side. Tenet recently updated the occult to version 2, reworking the axle to provide space for bigger bearings and improved sealing, while the price remains at a very competitive US$115. The occult features a symmetrical platform design, with the pins placed all around the edges. The pedal ships with thread-through pins installed, but a whole replacement set of classic grub screws are also provided in the box should you want to change things up, along with spacers that can be used to fine-tune the height of the thread-through pins. There is also an 8mm socket provided, which is needed to pull the axle out for maintenance. The platform is wide and offers 2mm of concavity in itself, further accentuated by the tall pins placed around the periphery. There is no bearing bulge of any kind, so the whole platform is available to place your foot on. The axle uses three bearings and an IGOS bushing to spin on, a fairly common configuration these days. Tenet offers all US owners one free pedal rebuild during the first year of ownership and a lifetime crash replacement program as well. Pretty good conditions in the flat pedal world. On the trail, the Occult impressed us from day one, delivering tenacious grip and a very natural feel under the foot. The large platform works well regardless of where you happen to plonk your foot down, and the significant concavity really allows the foot to sink in and hold on. The pin to axle distance is generous enough, and the absence of any kind of inside bearing bulge means that this pedal will work well both for riders who like a wide stance and those who prefer their ankle bones snug up against their crank arms. The symmetric shape of the Occult does not provide for a chamfered leading edge, which is arguably better at sliding off rocks than the rather square edge presented here. The imposing platform may also not be the first choice if your trails are super narrow, although Tenet did make good use of the available real estate by placing the pins fairly close to the edges of the platform. In summary, the Occult provides great grip with plenty of concavity and the roomy platform to place your foot on. It's thin and reasonably light without unnecessarily restricting the ability to run adequately dimensioned bearings. Best of all, it's very competitively priced, especially when you factor in the two full sets of different types of pins supplied, as well as the tool required to access the axle system for service. Certainly a contender. Feedback Sports has built a reputation for producing top-tier bike stands, tools and training products. Their bike stands have garnered mass popularity over the years, with everybody from shop wrenches to weekend warriors, thanks to their lightweight and portable design. An evolution of Feedback's Pro Elite stand, their latest Pro Mechanic HD model is the strongest stand they've ever produced, capable of holding bicycles up to 120 pounds. The general layout remains the same, featuring a tripod design with a telescoping tube and a folding clutch mechanism with clamping jaws. 
The anodized aluminum tubes are now oversized for maximum stiffness, and the stand's footprint is 7% larger than the Pro Elite. To support the weight of heavier bikes, the clutch mechanism was redesigned and is now 45% stronger, while the 360-degree rotating clamp jaw now uses a quick-spinning crank handle to speed up closure. The clamping jaw can open up to 2.6 inches to accommodate larger frame tubes, and the inside of the jaws features new, replaceable rubber pads to protect your frame. Finally, there's a magnetic bar on the clamping arm to store tools while working on your bike. Despite these robust changes, the stand is still fairly lightweight, tipping the scales at a manageable 18 pounds, and falls down small enough for easy transport. What does tip the scales is the ProMechanic HD's price tag of 495 US dollars. However, it should withstand years of abuse and is accompanied by a three-year warranty. In use, the quality and craftsmanship of the ProMechanic HD are nothing short of outstanding. Setup takes only moments, the tripod legs unfold effortlessly, and the updated quick-release clamp provides considerably more clamping force than the Pro Elite stand, but is much easier to engage. Tightening the clamp arm with the oversized knob is straightforward, and the engagement of the clutch mechanism is smooth and solid. Once fully set up, the stand is incredibly sturdy. The larger footprint and stiff tubing mitigated any wobbling or tipping, even when working on heavy, full-size e-bikes. Our favorite feature is the new quick-spinning crank handle. Lifting a heavy bike with one arm while simultaneously tightening the clamping jaw can become a serious juggling act, so having the ability to secure a bike in just a few seconds is greatly appreciated. Lastly, we didn't know a magnetic toolbar was a feature we seriously needed when wrenching on our bikes. Perfect for those without a tool bench nearby or for those parking lot fixes, the magnet strip easily holds several hex wrenches for quick access when needed. Overall, the Pro Mechanic HD stand improves on Feedback's previous models, offering riders a top-of-the-line stand that functions flawlessly. The stand is incredibly stable and capable of holding any bike, while the updated clutch mechanism and adjustment knobs make setup and breakdown painless. Considering our Pro Elite stand has worked without fault for eight years, we expect to spend at least the next decade with the Pro Mechanic HD. Outbound Lighting is the brainchild of two mountain bike riding engineers from Chicago who were frustrated with the current crop of bicycle lights in the market. Combining their past experiences in the automotive and LED lighting industries, they developed a helmet and handlebar light built for the specific needs of trail riding. We tested Outbound Lighting's Evo downhill package, which includes the Trail Evo handlebar light and Hangover helmet light and retails for $375. US Each light can be purchased individually and includes a charger and corresponding mount. The Trail Evo and Hangover lights were designed to strike the ideal balance of lumen output, battery life and weight, packaged in a simple user interface. There are four power modes to choose from, high, medium, low and adaptive. Toggling between modes is done with a single power button. Adaptive mode is unique to outbound lights and slowly lowers the brightness of the lights over a 45 minute period, allowing your eyes to adapt to the darkness while creating a light that feels brighter for longer. All modes include a 20 minute get home feature that reduces the light output when the battery is close to dying, giving riders a chance to finish their ride with light. Before the light completely dies, it will pulse for 15 seconds so riders can safely stop before being left in the dark. Both lights use a USB-C pass-through charger, allowing riders to connect the lights to an external battery while still in use. This is an awesome feature for riders taking on overnight excursions or 24-hour races. The Trail Evo weighs 315 grams and provides roughly 2,200 lumens displayed in a wide and balanced beam pattern with added spill light near the front tire. It attaches to the handlebar via a 2.5mm screw and fits 31.8 or 35mm handlebars. Shims are also available for narrower bars. Removing the light for charging is as simple as flipping a lever to disengage the cam, and the battery takes around 3-4 to four hours to reach full charge from completely dead. The hangover helmet light weighs only 125 grams and provides roughly 1000 lumens of focused light. Unlike other helmet light beams, the hangover provides a fuller field of view with a smooth transition of fall-off coverage around the periphery of the beam. The light uses a standard action cam helmet mount and comes with a curved mount for easy installation and compatibility with various helmet designs. Charge time is faster with the hangover, taking only about an hour and a half to reach full charge. On the trail, the Trail Evo and hangover lights were outstanding, allowing us to ride faster and with more confidence and control than any other lights we've used in the past. The Trail Evo provides bright, crisp and even light across a massive field of view. We've never been able to look so far ahead through corners while riding at night, and the rock-solid bar mount erased any chance of the light bouncing or shaking through rough terrain. The light also did a fantastic job of not washing out the trail, making it easy to gauge the depth and distance of oncoming features. Battery life varies depending on the mode used, but we continuously got about 3 hours out of the Trail Evo riding in a mixture of high and medium modes. Beyond the stellar light quality, we loved the ability to remove the Trail Evo for charging without having to remove the bar mount. We simply left the mount installed between night rides, which kept us from having to readjust the light every time we rode. 
Even though the hangover helmet light produces less light than the Trail Evo, the broad beam made it incredibly functional. We didn't notice a hot spot in the middle of the beam and the light was evenly dispersed over a large area, improving our ability to pick out details in the trail. When used with the Trail Evo, the two light beams complemented each other, creating a consistent light tone and brightness. The hangover's battery life is less than the Trail Evo and we typically got two to three hours of runtime riding in a mixture of high and medium. However, we often turn the hangover light off during climbs to extend the battery life. The simplicity of using an action camera mount was amazing, since we've always hated how other helmet lights use straps that aren't compatible with every helmet design. Slipping the hangover on and off was fast and painless, and the light itself was so light that we never felt it affecting how our helmet sat on our head. Reaching up and locating the power button was natural and made for easy, on-the-go light changes. Overall, we don't know if there's a better light combo on the market than Outbound's EVO downhill package. Between the light quality, battery life and solid mounts, you will be hard pressed to find better performing lights that will so significantly enhance the quality of your night rides. The price tag isn't cheap, but can you really put a value on being able to see? Ok then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails!